With Manwe dwells Varda, Lady of the Stars, who knows all the regions of Ea. Too great is her beauty to be declared in the words of men or of elves, for the light of Luvatar lives still in her face. In light is her power and her joy. Out of the deeps of Ea, she came to the aid of Manwe, for Melkor she knew from before the making of the music, and rejected him, and he hated her, and feared her more than all others whom Iru made. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today we are taking a look at the history of the Queen of the Valar, Varda or Elbereth. Articles and videos that helped with the creation of today's video may be found in the description and cards. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me today. Let's begin our tale. Before the beginning of Arda, Varda was one of the Ainur, a great being amongst many others. Before the making of the music of the Ainur and the creation of Arda, she knew Melkor and rejected him his future discord, and evil utterly. For her goodness, power, and light most of all, Melkor hated Varda the most, of all the Valar, and would come to fear her more than any other being that Iru Iluvatar made. Knowing and loving Manwe, the lord of the winds and heirs of Arda, who would be the high king of all Arda and Middle-earth, Varda descended into the world of Arda to aid him and be with him, and they married, and she became the queen of the Valar greatest of the Valier the female Valar, and she would reside with Manwe wherever he went, being seldom away from him. Coming into the physical world of Arda, she took on a form too beautiful for words, and her face radiated the light of Iluvatar himself. Her domain was holy light, which would make the great lamps, stars, and even Silmarils what they ended up being. Her name in Quenya was Varda Elentari, roughly meaning Sublime Star Queen. Her more popular Sindarin name was Elbereth Gilthonio, which approximately meant Lady of the Stars and Star Kindler, respectively. She had many more names beyond these, cited often in the poems of the Elves and the extended writings of Tolkien, but these are the main ones. Check out the Tolkien Gateway article in the description for more of the names. Varda's handmaiden would be Ilmare, a chief of the Maiar along with Eonwe, Manwe's herald. Like many of the characters and events in the elder days of Tolkien's works, some of the professor's later notes actually changed a lot about Varda and the creation of the stars, but here I will give my best approximations of the lore that I consider to be canon, based on the more holistic Silmarillion. During the years of the lamps in the spring of Arda, Varda filled the two lamps with light after they were created by Aule the smith, and Manwe hallowed them after this. Yet Melkor's evil pursued the works of the Valar, and he destroyed the two lamps and changed the world of Arda forever. The Valar would remove themselves to the uttermost west, settling in Valinor. Varda and her husband settled upon the mountain Taniquitil, and would gaze out into the world. If they stood together, Varda could hear all the voices in the world, just as Manwe could see all. Together they were powerful beyond reckoning. The two trees would grow through the powers of Yavanna and the tears of Nienna and Varda set up wells to keep the dews of the two trees. They were as wells of water and light. She kept them until such a time that Mandos, the doomsman and prophet amongst the Valar, claimed that the elves, the firstborn children for whom they yet awaited, would behold the stars first and would look to Varda in love. Therefore Varda went from the council of the Valar, looking out from the height upon Taniquitil, and with the dews of Telperion, the silver tree, she created the stars and constellations. Placing seven stars in the northern sky, she created the sickle of the Valar and challenged Morgoth, who feared and hated these unfading lights that only dark clouds could abate. They were forever beyond the reach of his evils, even if other lights such as the lamps, trees, and even sun and moon in the Dagor Dagoroth were not entirely beyond him. And so the elves awoke, and their eyes saw first the stars of the firmament of Arda, and they loved the stars, and Varda herself above all other Valar. Many would be the references to her and her many names in their poems and songs throughout the ages, as even her names held great power. After the coming of the elves to Valinor, of whom Varda most loved the Vanyar, Varda would hallow the Silmarils of Feanor, giving them the qualities that no mortal flesh, nor any creature of evil will, could touch them. Yet even so, Melkor would steal the Silmarils, their nature leaving burns upon his hands. And his companion, Ungoliant, would drink the dews of the trees from the wells of Varda as they destroyed the two trees. Together they fled to Middle-earth, and the Noldor would go after them. While the stars of Elbereth were indeed unblemished by these evils, they did not provide enough light for the peoples of Middle-earth. So Aule built vessels, 
ships to hold the light that Varda was once more tasked with giving. Placing the flower of Telperion the silver and the fruit of Laurelin the golden, the former two trees, in these vessels, Varda gave to them the light to outshine even the stars, and they would be the sun and moon, led in these ships by Maiar. Now originally, Varda proposed that they go back and forth in the sky, never letting darkness touch the world. But the Valar Irmo and Este reputed this, saying that there would never therefore be a time of night, nor rest under the stars. And so Varda changed her advice, having the sun go from east to west, with the moon ever following it and chasing it, sometimes meeting with it in an eclipse, and sometimes they would disappear from the sky, just as the Maiar leading them would. Thus the people of Middle-earth would never be without some light from Varda, not unless they were under cloud, earth, or water. And that is why, at least in part, Melkor and Sauron ever sought to block out the lights of the sun, stars, and moon, and the advances of the works of Varda. Near the end of the First Age, Eärendil would join the domains of Varda and Menwë, taking a Silmaril into the sky and becoming yet another star, the Evening Star, while his wife Elwing would go up and meet with him as a bird of flight at the edge of Valinor. The lights of Varda would continue to be in the sky for as long as Arda endured, until at least the end of the sun and moon, at the turn of the Dagor Dagoroth and end of the world, if such things were to happen. Perhaps Varda and Manwë themselves knew if such an event would come to pass, but they never said. Regardless, Varda's power and names, and any other visions or prayers answered by the Valier, would give the peoples of Middle-earth hope, even in the darkest of times. Her name would be spoken many times in the Lord of the Rings, but we see that all evil things hated her, just as their first Dark Lord did. Frodo yelled the name Elbereth as he dove at the feet of the Witch King near Weathertop with a swipe of his sword, and yet the name Elbereth did more damage to the Witch King than the sword ever did. When lost in the Tower of Cirithungal, Sam Gamgee sang a song of Elbereth and found Frodo in the darkness. A star of Elbereth even gave Sam hope, as one could be seen even through the darkness of Mordor. Ever were the stars and other works of Varda present in Middle-earth, lights beyond the darkness of the world, reminders that evil and darkness would never have mastery over the good and the light. And so we come to the end of our tale on Varda, or Elbereth, the Queen of Stars. From the story of Varda and her stars, many of which match our own stars, we see that the lights of hope in darkness should never be forgotten, for they are always there no matter the shrouds of evil we face. There is always good in this world, such that it is beyond the confines of evil, and we must always remember that no matter what we face. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed this epic character history. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts on Varda? Let me know in the comments below. Hers is such an inspiring lore, and I definitely see why Varda is the most beloved by the elves of all the Valar. I really appreciate this character and her symbols. If you would like to support the channel, please consider getting some candles from our friends, Mythology Candles, through the link in the description below, or check out our merch or Patreon. Thanks to our Valor Tier patrons, Peter Shepard, Jonathan Putin, and Mark Kralik, Blair Scout, and Merton, John Hume, Sam McBee, Matt Sabach, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Reese Jenkins, Adam Petrolik, Brandon Glidden, Molly Sullivan, Daniel Burns, Anthony Harmon, Dorwin Gray, Arthur Merlin, DJ Vaught, and Dale Davis. Thank you so much to all of our patrons and YouTube members, the support means so much to me. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today. And I'll see you all again next Sunday with a video on the tale of how Arnor and Gondor were almost reunited, but lost their kings instead. You all are the best, my friends. Thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.